Bro, what you got? Welcome to episode 97 Dang. of the Focus Cast. Almost out of Hundy. I know. This uh, round of episodes, we're just doing a little recap. We're coming towards the end of the year and our 100th episode anniversary. We're just trying to wrap it up. Yeah, we're wrapping up this season. So we're doing some low... Low barrier to entry episodes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think... Um, no, we're just talking about what we've learned and what we've started using and implementing in our processes. Yeah, it's like all the shit you see on social. Like, are people actually... Is that who they are or are they just talking about it? So, mm. I mean, we've talked about a lot of stuff over 100 episodes. So I thought it'd be cool just to kind of hit some of these subjects and then talk about, like, what's, what's stuck with us. Mm. What's stuck with us and where are we stuck? Yes, because <laughs> that's 2024's goal. 2024 <laughs> goal. <laughs> 2024 runner goals. <laughs> Sweet, bro. Uh, I think that's it. You want to start this? Yeah, last episode we talked about uh, nootropics and cognitive enhancers. This time we're going to talk about productivity tools, um, mm. some apps that we're using more around that productivity subject. How our workflow, what yeah, we use for our workflow. workflow. Podcast workflow, tools, all that fun shit. Nice. Hell yeah. All right, let's dig in. Let's roll. Um, Jonathan Noel. And I'm Brian Noel. This is the Focus Guest. Where we help you... Reduce distractions. Increase focus. So you can live a life with... Intentions. Intention. Fuck yeah. So yeah, I mean, you know, we've talked about this quite a bit. It comes up on a lot of episodes. Uh, you know, people are distracted because of information overload. Yep. People have poor time management skills. Yep. Lack They're of They're not organized. Motivation. Yeah, lack of motivation. That's a good one. A lot of that has to do with their psyche and their health and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, Potentially the poison, the food that's basically poison with the glyphosate and yep. everything around us is chemical based. Chemical and poison, we're basically food poison, under, and relationship poison. under chemical warfare. But yeah, you know, just a couple of those things, no big deal. Just a couple of those things. Yeah, and multitasking. Yeah, so we're trying to do it all. Trying to do it all. Doing you know. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Doing a whole lot of nothing. Well, and I, um, you know, if you look at some of the economic reports and just how like the cost of living versus the income increase and how I think I saw a stat the other day that said, um, I can't remember the percentage, I'm not even going to quote it, but it was a pretty high percent of Americans that have two full-time jobs. 80 hours a week. Just trying to make, make ends meet. It's fucked up. Yeah, it's, it's pretty wild. So yeah. yeah so anyway. That's, uh, yeah, that's not good. So a lot of people um, are just trying to figure out, you know, what's that side hustle that might turn into a main muscle? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a main hustle. That's right, <laughs> you know. So, um, you know, we're all trying to figure out ways to be efficient with the things we have to do so we can spend more time doing the things we want to do yep. or the things that will put us in the position that we're doing more of what we want to. So It's like trying to be efficient is a never-ending goal. Yeah, which is great. Yeah. How can we make all the systems work better Yeah, and faster? There's a podcast by Rob Dyrdek, and he was talking about, um, which he's the uh, ridiculousness guy. Yeah. Uh, pro skater a long time ago. was on Robin Big. Um, Fun Factory. What was that one called? Uh, yeah. Fantasy Factory. Fantasy Factory. Um, but he's he was talking about, and he's like a He's like an insane guru now. Mm -hmm. uh, go listen to some of his podcasts. Very, very inspiring. And he's just the coolest, nicest guy. But um, he's talking about how they filmed Ridiculousness. And when they started, it was um, took all day to do two episodes. Mm -hmm. And now they're doing like six episodes in like a four-hour block, something like that. Yeah. Just, he just said, I'm, I'm just relentless about building out systems mm -hmm. to increase output. Yeah. And reduce time. So. Makes sense. <laughs> so, yeah, as we kind of round out the year, we've been building systems around the podcast. We've been building systems around uh, going out and for Forerunner Gunner and getting show, getting content and bringing yep. that back. Been building systems uh, around making music. Yeah. Been building systems around launching a footwear company. Building systems around building systems. Yeah. There's been a lot of just kind of getting things figured out. Yeah, I remember when we've... When we've 
first got this this studio. Yeah. And we weren't doing it on the phone anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden we had like we were trying to do four camera angles. Yes. So I was editing four <laughs> angles. It should be like back and forth between us and then like an overhead, a yada yada. Yeah. And it's just eventually it's like why? Yeah. Now it's one. One camera. One camera. Yeah. So, you know what? Fuck this. I mean it's audio first. People are listening more than they are watching. Yeah, exactly. So. I mean, we're really interesting and, you know, cool to look at. As we stare at each other <laughs> for 20 minutes. But, but I'm not sure how many people are watching the episodes. Just a couple cougars, bro. <laughs> Just a couple cougars. Just a couple cougs out there. <laughs> um, so, yeah. We just kind of want to hit some of our systems. and Yeah, I think for the podcast, one of the greatest things you found was Buzzsprout. Yeah, I mean, Buzzsprout's a great host. Yeah. Um, it pushes it out to all the distribution channels. Yeah, and I've not used another one, but yeah. you know it works. Yeah, and now they've got a new AI tool. Yep, helps you with titles and description and you know, timestamps. Exactly, and, and we don't use all of it, everything that they produce, but at least it helps. Yeah, for sure. Time. So that's been a, I mean, that system alone for the podcast. Oh um, yeah, it's it, a yeah. Uh, you know, we're Adobe sweet people for the editing and things like that, but um. Yeah, the whole this year has definitely been an Adobe kind of <laughs> jump start. Well, yeah, because now I have like I put in my custom shortcuts where it's like all the shit you need is like right there, super quick. Yeah, and I can sit there and chop, splice, whatever, render way faster, way faster, way faster. It's nice. And then for our content calendar and task management, we use a tool called ClickUp, mm. which I uh, was introduced to in the last company that we sold out of and it's one of my favorite it's essentially a form of a kanban board your traditional um kanban board or agile board and uh, but i i love it so we got our content calendar mm -hmm. you know we we um yeah i'm a fan of ClickUp as well yeah we brainstorm we create a card for different ideas and then we record it we move it down until it's done it's perfect honestly for anyone who has if you're doing anything that has like multiple steps, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, because you create the card or task or whatever, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. and you just move it down the line. Okay, it's now it's it's an idea. Now it's recorded. Now it's uploaded, and now it's done. You know all that shit. Yeah, and I think um, for if anyone's tried any of those, there's Trello. There's um, I think a Jira. What was that other one you were using? Basecamp. Basecamp. Which, Which every time I try it, I always end up abandoning Basecamp. Um, yeah, I'm, that one's one of the most popular ones. But I like ClickUp. Yeah, I mean, but they all one. work. Yeah, you know, it's better than nothing. It's better than having like pieces that of paper all over your <laughs> yeah that you lose <laughs> and you have to rewrite over and over again. <laughs> it's like sticky notes on your desk that kind of fall off and like end up in the trash. So yeah, I think the other habit for me is. Um, as far as productivity, we're G Suite, but um, I just I am relentless about my calendar. I yeah. just it my calendar reflects my day always. Yeah, every moment. Yeah, I'm I'm stepping into that world more. I'm I know. not as I'm not like Brian. <laughs> we had an episode on time blocking, and that was months ago, months ago now. And you were like, I, I should probably start using the calendar. <laughs> No, I said I actively time block or actively block time blocking. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, and I have been. Yeah, and it is nice. <laughs> it's nice to just look at the month and see all the big trips, and then yeah. you know, it's it makes you feel better because then you're not like, oh wait, when is this shit happening again? Because <laughs> that's what I did for years. I'm like, I know there's something happening in October. You're like what on is Saturday, and I'm like, bro, are you in town next? Or you want to go for a ride next week? And you're like. Yeah, man. And then you text me. You're like, I'm going to the beach for a week. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that was next week. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. No. Um, well, it really became critical because we started planning all these Forerunner Gunner trips. And yes. we were like, you know, we're doing those once a month now. Mm -hmm. You know, so that was like, that was a major calendar impact. And I like having a calendar. <laughs> it feels nice. You I'll, me, I'll admit it. You want me to tell you a funny story of calendars? What's that? 
So my wife has always had a paper calendar. Mm-hmm. And I was always like, babe, you need a digital calendar. You need a digital calendar. So she found one and she started using it and she she like fully got into it and then like it deleted all of her stuff. Now she's back to the paper. <laughs> well, now she has both. Okay. But I'm going to say that wouldn't happen on Google, I feel like. Yeah, I don't remember what it was or how it happened, but she was just like it was hilarious cuz she's like, "See? <laughs> <laughs> Told you. Told you it wasn't going to work." <laughs> well, it was funny. She's like, "Now I don't remember." Oh my gosh. Um and then I'm I'm one of those email people like zero inbox. I unsubscribe to anything I don't want. Yeah. Sometimes you got to go through and trim all that shit out. Yeah. So it just happens. Yeah. I just can't. I can't look for the one thing I need among 20 things that I don't need. I just can't do that. Yeah. It's obnoxious. So I just unsubscribe from You ever see people's cell phone and you see like 10,000 unread emails <sighs> right on their home screen? Yeah. I feel like, <laughs> and this is me judging them because I'm not them. <laughs> so uh, this is total judgment and yeah. bias and, and uh, mostly probably wrong, maybe. But I feel like there's like, it's like the big truck, you know? It's like how small is your penis? <laughs> you know, when you have like an obnoxiously large truck yeah. and you got the nuts hanging out the back. Yeah. And like you're like stomping on the gas and diesel smoke's coming you're out everywhere. You're comparing that to having 10,000 unread emails? <laughs> I think there's a flex there. No, I think, I think it's a flex. I think it's people who just don't care. But how how can you even? They're just too late, not lazy, but they just don't go in and clear well, it out. Just turn that fucking notification off. See, this is why I know it's a me problem and not a them problem. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think. But I think, do you not? How think you're a, reading it is way different than how I read it. I read it as like you know, someone looks at your phone and you've got ten thousand unanswered texts. I feel like people are flexing, like everyone wants to talk to me and I don't talk to them. I'm talking about ten thousand unread emails. I'm saying someone who gave their email out to fifty different websites, <laughs> they never unsubscribed, and now they're just getting blasted, and they never went through and just cleared the inbox. Yeah. So the notifications on their phone, where you can see it. You know what I'm talking about. Yes, right? yes. How many unread emails they have? Yeah. See, I can't. My phone, number one, I have zero notifications on. Zero. Yeah. Zero. Um, number two, I don't, those bubbles don't show up on any of my icons. You turn them off? I turn them off because I would, I would immediately look at every single one that came in. Yeah. Because I'm a zero inbox, zero notification, zero. I keep everything at zero. <laughs> So anyway. Well, interesting. <laughs> it just goes to show that people interpret situations differently. Hey, we fill in the gaps. We did that episode uh, a couple of episodes ago where we yes. write our own narratives. Yep, absolutely. We, we get a little bit of fact and write a ton of fiction and believe <laughs> it. <laughs> just the human experience. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the other tool that I've used for probably 10 years now is Evernote. So Evernote's an online uh, notes-taking system app on your phone and desktop and Chrome extension. Mm-hmm. But um, but I throw all like my bills and all that kind of shit I get digitally mm-hmm. that I don't want to, that I want to keep a record of. Mm-hmm. And I can just, I can get a bill and just snap a button and it goes off into my Evernote land. Mm. So I've got, I've got documents from forever ago. Yeah. So for know. some reason... You're audited, worst case scenario. Yeah, you can't trust the sh- bank. If the bank goes down yeah. and they're like, you didn't have $20,000 yeah. and you have to prove it. Yeah. You know, so shit like that. Yeah. That's definitely some stuff, something a bank would do. Yeah. Like, you didn't have any money. I think that actually happened to our dad. Um, he paid off the house and they told him he didn't. So he yes. takes stubs. I remember that story. And then they were like, oh, okay, sorry, we got that wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine if you didn't have this. Didn't have the stuff. Yeah. And you're like, no, I paid it off. And no, I wasn't take your house away. <laughs> so then you end up with the the kill dozer, the guy who put the armor around the, <laughs> yes. the bulldozer and Yeah, and took off. Took and went towards City Hall. <laughs> kill dozer. <laughs> um isn't that in the original movie of Mary Poppins, uh where the bank was trying to take people's houses? Yeah, see that story's been around for a while. I don't know why banks have a bad name. <laughs> why do people hate the banks? <laughs> I thought they were good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't use Evernote, but yeah, it sounds effective. Yeah, it's been around a while. It's a staple. Sixty yeah. bucks a year. Yeah, that's not bad. Um, that's all the main stuff. Yeah. 
the roadcaster that's more gear related yeah that's not efficiency but it is nice yeah it, i mean if we talk about some of the gear we bought that's super efficient for the podcast i think it's great um because you just plug in the card we have our sounds yeah it's pretty efficient yeah so we have our sounds our intro blah 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 i don't have to go in adobe and add it I, nope. we just hit the buttons yeah so that's great yeah yeah that definitely saves some time so anyway yeah that's pretty much i think that's it yeah that we use that's the main stuff but i use audible i've i've uh i've wanted to consume more books for a long time so but now i've just learned that like when i can't read um i wouldn't read mm. you know mm -hmm. so and and my brain is i have to have complete silence mm -hmm. when i read because i'll just not be able to focus mm -hmm. um and that's hard right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, yep. we live in a small house <laughs> and i got kids <laughs> but um so anyway, so reading a book when I can and then Audible, uh, definitely crushing some stuff there. Um, and then uh, what's the main podcast app do you use? Spotify. Yeah. Spotify. Yeah, it's just everything on Spotify. Whew, I hate Spotify. Even though they're horrible to artists, they don't pay shit. Yeah. You know both sides of that coin. <laughs> I think you don't get paid shit, but you use it all the time. Hey, they provide a service that I like. <laughs> I've had Spotify paid, like, I've been paying for it since, like, 2014. Wow. Have they ever reached out to you and said thank you? Uh, I don't know. Probably. They, they probably send that email once a year. <laughs> I just don't look at it because <laughs> I don't clear my inbox. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, what is it, Spotify? It's uh, uh, shitty for artists, but we keep paying to use it. Yeah, what does that say about me? Uh, well, I was just thinking that's, like... Our government. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we keep paying. Yeah. Get... That's Wait. true. That's an abusive relationship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what that is. But as far as streaming and finding any song and every song in the world and the user experience, obviously that's why they've done such a great job because it's a great UI. Yeah, it's decent. I don't know. Sometimes it's irritating. Uh, like when you go to an artist and you just want to look at the discography. Yeah. And it's... But I don't know. I half the time I'm looking at that shit while I'm driving, so maybe that's why it's inefficient <laughs> to me. Well, have you ever used Apple Podcast? No. Have you ever used SoundCloud? No. Have you ever used Apple Music? No. I Spotify is one of the better ones. Yeah. Okay. Because they're worse. <laughs> so. I believe it. In my opinion, different different clicks for different chicks, different strokes for different folks. Yeah, there it is. And that really works for both strokes and clicks. Yeah. For a, U, a UI joke. Are yeah. you I saying? Damn, we better leave because it's getting nerdy. Yep. All right, we out. <laughs> <laughs>